Hey everyone, welcome to our AI Builder series where we interview innovators building AI power applications on Snowflake. Today, I'm joined by Greg, CTO of Lemini. Greg, welcome. We'd love for you to start with a quick intro and tell me more about Lemini. It's great to be here. So let me start with how I got here. I started my career building really fast computers. One of the first projects that I worked on was an internal project that eventually became called CUDA uh, that was developed at NVIDIA. And in this project, we had actually invented a completely uh, new way of building a computer that was a lot more efficient. But we didn't know what we could use it for. So we went on this long, winding journey that eventually uh, led to the discovery of what's now known as deep learning. So we found that GPUs paired with deep learning algorithms enabled completely new applications. And one of the applications that came out of that was large language models. We deployed the first large language model in production to a billion users in the Baidu search engine. It's the first at scale deployment. And we discovered that in addition to doing things like completing the sentence that we used, for example, in the search bar, the language model, as you fed it more data, it would actually gain new abilities. So it gained the ability to speak English, to answer questions, to reason, to write software. And we realized that the underlying trend behind that led to the language model continuing to learn. So it, as you feed it more data, we'd expect it to learn even more advanced abilities in the future. Super interesting journey, being able to have worked at the CUDA project back at NVIDIA. Now you're getting to work on more LLM stuff as part of your, of your career. You've mentioned, right, LLMs know so much about how to talk back to us, right? They, they know a lot of facts, but they mostly know facts about the internet. What is it that is so valuable about the data in Snowflake that sort of let you uh, to start working on functionality that runs specifically inside the Snowflake uh, platform? All of the valuable data in the world is private data. So you can imagine, uh, back when I worked at NVIDIA, we had hundreds of millions of lines of code, the implementation of the chip. Engineers poured their lives into that. Like 10,000 engineers working for 10 years poured their lives into that. You can imagine proprietary data, like a recipe for the best adhesive in the world, or the Coke recipe. Those things are not floating around on the internet. The most valuable data in the world is private data. And that's why it's important to partner with Snowflake, where we can actually have an environment that's safe to keep private data, and that the private data has been processed and developed, but we can actually pair that together with a language model that can learn that data and understand that data and actually extend and um, apply that data in, in, in different applications. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more with you around the uh, important and valuable data is private. And there's, right, we're like at a point where the enterprises can now use all that data, combine it with this pre-trained LLMs to do a lot of really cool stuff. And I'm glad you guys are tapping into that. At a very high level, walk me through, like, what are the different components of the Lemini platform and what made it easy for you to bring that into Snowflake? So one thing that we've learned about enterprise data um, and enterprise applications is that security matters and data privacy matters. So you need a compute environment that is secure and that is isolated. So many of these platforms, many of these stacks have all sorts of dependencies. They have many different services that they link together. The uh, big difference about Lamini is that it's a completely one container. So all of the dependencies, every single thing that you need to run a language model, not just run a language model, but actually train the language model. Um, the same thing that Anthropic or OpenAI is doing when they're building their you know, next generation language model. All of that technology is wrapped um, up in a single container. And we, because we can wrap that up in a single container, um, we can actually deploy it in the same compute environment that you run the database in, that you have like, direct access to your private data. And it's also secure. There's nothing that can escape that, that boundary. Yeah, no, I think security is important, and enterprise customers really care about that. But I'm sure they also care about being able to do this in a really easy way. So we'd love to see a demo of how you guys make the whole LM customization process really easy by having your platform as a native app inside Snowflake. Yeah, let's, let's take a look at it. We're going to start by looking at an application that's already been deployed as a native app. So you can see from the URL, we're looking at two things. There's a playground and there's a notebook. The playground is typically used to interact with the language model. So you turn it on, you press launch the app, you allocate the compute pool, you launch the app, you can immediately start interacting with the language model. We typically see a workflow where customers start with an open language model. 
like imagine a Llama 2, Mistral, use these very powerful but completely open language models, maybe Phi from Microsoft. So you start from one of these language models and then you add your data to it. You can add the data in multiple ways. You can add it with few shot learning in the prompt. You can add it as a query with a method like RAG. Um, but you can also, in Lamini, uniquely in Lamini, you can update the weights of the language model. So you can fine tune the language model so that it learns um, the actual facts from your data and can use that during reasoning. So in order to do that, we typically build a data pipeline. So this is an example of a notebook, a very simple data pipeline that's built inside of a notebook where we load data, we instantiate a language model. So here we're showing a Python interface from Llama import question, answer, and model. In this case, we might be starting from a base model like a Llama 2 or Mistral. You can load your data. It's formatted. It's questions and answers in this case. And then you can call LLM train, which will actually start a training job that's running on the compute pool that's already allocated. So of course, fine tuning is computationally expensive. It doesn't complete in a few seconds. If we go back to the UI, you can see a series of jobs that have been launched. We can see the one that was just launched. We're queuing it. And we see a previously run job that maybe we didn't use the right parameters and it failed. I mean, we also have um, a model that was completed. And so we have a UI that you can see the status of the model. You can actually look at the detailed logs. So you can see the model being loaded, the model architecture, the hyperparameters, metrics like the training loss. So you can see some telemetry of the model. And you can actually interact with that model. So in this case, the model was trained. And it's actually produced a completely unique model. This is a uh, previously didn't exist model. In this case, we can refer to it with a model ID. Lamini, in addition to being a fine-tuning platform, it also, inside of the same container, it has a complete inference server. It's a highly optimized inference server that can support millions of models simultaneously. So you can actually take those models, and this is using our Python client. You can insert them back into the notebook or the data pipeline that you're using. You could insert this back into your application, so you can continue fine-tuning the model, continue training it, you could also deploy it immediately. The Lamini containers scale horizontally, so you can, even if you have a large amount of traffic, you can scale horizontally and accommodate a, a very large amount of traffic. So those are just a, a preview of some of the things you can do with, with Lamini. Um, starting all of this is just a single button click from your Snowflake environment. Yeah, no, that's really cool. I think how you've been able to bring this full-fledged application, as you mentioned, right, all these dependencies in a single container, running it in Snowflake, which sort of brings me to the question you touched at the beginning, which is security. What is it about this deployment method as a native app that is ensuring that your, your end customers, right, who are also Snowflake customers, give you the trust with the most valuable data with an application for a company that is fairly new, right, and they're just starting to build your own brand, how does this help you sort of like get to those customers that have such uh, private and proprietary data that they want to use with LLMs? We, we've heard this repeatedly from our customers, that they want access to the most advanced technology. They want to be able to use the most advanced LLMs, but they don't want a data breach. They don't want a leak um, that takes down their entire IT systems for a year. They don't want to leak their proprietary secrets. They don't want to leak their trade secrets. So by deploying in the Snowflake environment, which is already validated, it already has um, a very high security posture, um, and also deploying is an isolated container. We have a containment domain that there's nothing that can leak outside of the container. You have your data that goes into the container. You have the model that you're working on, and it's completely contained in the existing Snowflake environment. So you don't have to worry about sending data to someone else's servers and what can happen if it gets leaked. Um, you also don't have to worry about the model learning from that data, so either directly or from derivatives. Um, one of the things that I think is just important to realize is that all of these models are based off of scaling laws, which is a simple recipe. It's like you put data together with compute. The only way to make the, the model better is to feed it with data. So every company that is building models and has their moat essentially around um, the model has an incentive to feed as much data as possible into that model, which is pretty misaligned, actually, for the with most businesses. Yeah, I think that you really, like I said, that there's a mode both around the data, and now that you're injecting that data into the model, then that model also becomes really valuable to the company. How is that now proprietary package of code uh, governed or protected uh, when you're using Lamina, and how does the customer have control over that model uh, so that only they have access to it? either in Snowflake or, or somewhere else? Yeah, so in, in Lamina, our philosophy is that the customer fully owns their data and all derivatives of their data, including the model. So the, the way that we ensure that is that 
we do have this inference server, so you can actually query the model, but you can also export the model. After you've um, taken your data and used it to update the model's weights, those are new weights, and you can export them in standard formats like PyTorch save model format. That just immediately can be accessed um, from the container, and you can manage that within the Snowflake platform. Um, and you can also use that if you use a different, um, for example, like a different inference service, you can deploy that using you know, the service that, that you like. Yeah, no, that's really cool. And I think sort of talking about deployment service, um, how does Lemonai help with the whole deployment process, right? I think you are talking about tons of data sets. I imagine different companies will have multiple data sets that they want to use to fine tune these models over the long run. But then to access those, how does Lemonai make it easy to get access to those LMs that have been fine tuned uh, for those specific use cases? So, one of the really hard technical problems is that these language models are giant. They might take um, 100 gigabytes to store the entire model. If you fine tune a lot of models, you now have a huge working set size. And so dealing with that working set size efficiently is really difficult technically. Um, you don't want to have 100 different servers all simultaneously serving 100 different models. That would be egregiously expensive. If you can see, you know, every one is filled with GPUs. That would be enormously expensive. Um, what we do is we tightly uh, compress the models. So we take the models, and we do update the weights of the models, but we essentially highly compress the changes to the model to the weights so that it's much smaller. The delta to the model is much smaller than the total size of the model. And because we've um, essentially invented a compression technology that allows us to do that, we can serve a very large number. Think of millions of models from a single server. Yeah, and I really like that because it kind of really aligns with Snowflake's philosophy, which is how do we bring technology at the lowest cost of ownership? And this is stuff that makes it really easy to have a lot more models, but also keep it more cost effective in the long run as you have more and you're running a lot more inference jobs on top of those models. Greg, it's been a pleasure to have you here. How does someone learn more about Lamini and how to get started? We have a number of resources that you can use. You can go to lamini.ai. We also have a number of courses that are available on Coursera and Deep Learning AI on how to fine tune language models and prompt tune open language models. Awesome. So you guys know where to go. Uh, if you want to learn more about Lemini. But thank you for joining us for this episode on AI Builders. To learn more about how you can bring really innovative technology into Snowflake as part of our native app framework. To hear from more AI builders in the future, make sure to subscribe to our channel.